human artists have come to an impasse. Many are about to lose everything to AI, and that's their own fault. You may say it doesn't make real art. Well, anything is art. The word means nothing anymore, so yeah, it does. And I think it actually makes art better than us, not because it's technically got the edge, or because it's faster or smarter than us, which it is. It's a better artist because it acts like a real artist. It makes human art better than most humans do. Why? Because on its baby Bambi legs, it's making lots of mistakes. It's new, and that's why it's fun. I'd go as far as to say it makes the first true form of digital art that I've ever actually seen. See, the problem with digital art, as I see it to this day, is control Z, undo. As soon as you see something you don't like, you can totally reverse time. You can even explode your image out into layers and see every element of your artwork. You have infinite control. And in the area of commercial art, that's perfect. Because the last thing you want is to do a, a whole book of illustrations. And then on the last day, the client comes back to you and says, well, maybe the main character should have a bigger hat. You don't have to redraw everything from scratch. And in animation, you can do 3D reference models to reuse in scenes. It's amazing. The controls that digital art has given to artists for the last generation is incredible. But with every element of progress, something is lost. And artists who are not forced to work through their mistakes do not break into new ground. AI is currently making wonderful, crazy errors. And that's why it's interesting. Plus, if you do art for hire, you are a tool for that company, a tool used to achieve a goal. And all tools eventually get automated. Artists, dare I say it, sometimes arrogantly think our industry is immune to automation. Well, no other is. Efficiency wins. The romantic idea of an artist is as commercially inefficient as the romantic idea of a fly fisherman to a seabed trawler. Morality aside, what works best is what people pay for. And artists deserve this. We've handed over the risks of creativity and mistakes for ultimate control. And those very tools that allow it are pushing us out. Imagine if you were into visual art 100 years ago, a budding watercolor artist. You go see a famous exhibition by a master. You have no camera to record it. If you're lucky, you might get a black and white book, rush home, pick up your palette and try to replicate it. You won't be able to because your memory will fail and your line, your shading, your ignorance, your mistakes will take over. And eventually, once they're refined, you'll develop your own unique style. Now, it might not be completely original, but it'll be original to you and it'll be a new direction for you. And you have no idea what anyone else is working on until the next show. Now, we have a bank of images full of every image ever created on a screen in front of us to cross-reference, mix and merge together, we are never left completely in the dark. Along comes an algorithm that can scour all the knowledge, much like a fishing trawler, and collect all of those image, images in a much better way than you. That's just natural progression to me. But those skills are not what makes someone an artist. It's perhaps important here to break down art into two categories. And, or talking about art can often be pointless. But on one hand, we have art, as I will define it, food for the soul. The type of art we enjoy personally, born from a love of art, a communication tool for the more intangible things in life. And in rare cases, it can also lead people to commercial success. But the more common form of commercial art is this second category. Art that goes into the collective economy. That can be in the commercial industries, graphics, gaming, any visual element within a larger project that your services as an artist are hired out for. And it's this second category that the risks of AI are mainly framed at, taking people's jobs. It's actually this category that will benefit the most from AI. But I'm also going to argue that AI art is going to dominate the first category, 
the one close to my heart, the food for the soul art, that makes art for humans better than humans. But the most interesting part in all of this is I don't think it will for long. Now, I personally straddle both of these categories. I make and sell my own individual artworks, paintings, woodcuts, sculpture, but I also work for clients. And just last year, I did a project that can already be done better by AI. I designed some chapters and a cover for a book that were done in a single, continuous, non-crossing line, much like a snake on your old phones. And six months ago, when I first played with AI art, it could get nowhere near this. Now, with the right prompts, it's better than me. So do I feel threatened? Well, yeah, my ego doesn't like it. But while I may not get many more gigs like that, the client will still require those images. And to get them from AI, someone who can use AI. Now, will the value of that work go down? Yeah. New work will also be invented, though, and creative jobs that are unfathomable to us now. Already the prompt artist is a thing that people are laughing at as not being a real artist. <clears throat> now, when I say that word, artist, what do you think of in the most like traditional sense? I think of painting pictures with a paintbrush. Well, I do that. And there was a time when I wouldn't have been called a real artist as I don't mix my own pigments. Some machine makes them and I buy them. I don't collect and bind hog hairs for my brush. So you don't have to create the tools to use the tools to make the art. And while prompt artists may not seem creative now, they are using AI like a tool and that tool will be wielded and how it will be wielded in future is yet to be determined. And what the AI is trying to do, well, it can't say. Thankfully, it doesn't write reams of modern art bollocks about why it's profound. Most artists don't know and cannot say what they are doing. If you can say what you are doing, you are not producing art. This is where the artisan, the craftsperson and the commercial artist just have to wait at the door. You can tell a story about what you understand or what you think. You can tell someone else's story. Great. You can use your artistic tools to do that, but good art tells a story about something you don't understand. Good art exists just beyond what you can comprehend in words, but that you know has some truth in it. This is why a lot of conceptual art cannot stand alone because it sets out a statement to decide what it's going to say before it's even been made. And, and it's like putting the cart before the horse. Artists work best when they are just out of their comfort zone, just unable to get their footing, exploring the unknown, trying to work something out and pulling people along for the ride. How can they possibly do that if they're in full control of their images? If they can comfortably pull back, control Z. Every time they want to undo something, visual art in the digital world, in, in the digital world was going nowhere new. That was until AI came along and does not quite what you expect of it. It makes glorious mistakes and therefore makes glorious art. I'll give some examples in a minute. But for the people who do not see any artistic validity in AI because it's a machine or something, in my opinion, are focusing too much on its current lack of technical skill. I mean, they're probably worried about the AI becoming a robot that overtakes us all, but just for now, the technical skill, how it can't do hands very well. But that's where true creativity is born even with people. You have to stretch beyond what you can do to do things that you can't. And it, that's when things get interesting. The, the prompt, when prompts in AI are so loose that it's just able to explore this unknown, this, this novel, it, it's producing art on a scale that people, real humans, have not allowed themselves to do in the digital space for the last decade. If you look at the human faces, created by AI, they are accidentally surreal in a way that reminds people of Salvador Dali. He would have been fascinated by this. He's a man who famously didn't sleep until he hallucinated to try and see things differently. And what did he famously say? He said that mistakes are almost always of a sacred nature. Never try to correct them. On the contrary, rationalize them, understand them thoroughly. And it's fascinating to me how recognizing exact faces and perfectly what our hands are doing is so important to us on a daily function that when the AI makes errors in it, it's devastatingly wrong to us. But even when we draw people, we often overemphasize hands or oversimplify faces. Normally, 
we get the right amount of digits, I'll give you that, which hey, I can't. But I love seeing how something technological programmed by us makes the same mistakes as us, but in a totally unexpected way, seeing us through this new lens, one that's as detached from us and our human biases has ever been available before. I think of it as like what aliens might draw of us if they were to see us fleetingly. So what are some of the best mistakes in AI? Well, the morphing images that come out of stable diffusion look more like any dream than anything I've ever seen done by a person. The AI loses the image it's meant to be tracing and guessing badly. It mimics the unconscious flow of a dream perfectly. My very last video that I made was an arty farty attempt to show what my dreams were like. And it's not a touch on this. It hasn't got that random synapse feel where your dreams can suddenly and incomprehensibly just change complete location or people, but you don't question it. It seems real in this unreal way. And then another example is the wonderful idea of minus one, a command code that tells the AI to look for the opposite of what precedes it. Now, considering the AI has a bank of pretty much every image uploaded to the internet with knowledge of each reference as to what that image is, that's a fun idea. What is the opposite of scissors? Or what is the opposite of a pair of set of keys? You know, when you have the whole of every single image ever created to trawl through. It's amazing. And then there's a great video that talks about this accident called Lobe. And this was this woman created who was really creepy. And when you try and mix her image with others, she would always remain. And something about her was always associated to the most grotesque and disturbing images. She would not go away. Why? No one knows. It's a mistake, but it's a great story and you should watch the video, I'll link it. She is very resilient and draws on all of these great parallels about AI maybe understanding our morbid fascinations better than us. And it's a complete algorithmic mistake. And when you think it looks like a bit like Francis Bacon paintings, then you've got to think about what he said about mistakes. He said all art is an accident, but it's also not an accident because one must select what part of the accident you choose to preserve. Well, if art is allowing yourself to make mistakes, perhaps the artist decides which one to keep. AI here is making mistakes. It's still people deciding which one to keep. But to learn from your mistakes is to have to let them happen. You have to work with the mistake. You have to go through it. Back into the real tangible world, this is why I love painting in oil paint or charcoal, because once the mark is made, you have to live with it. You never paint the picture you plan to paint. And I'll use digital work to fill a brief, but here in the studio, never. Artists can get way too in their own way. And I struggle with this all the time, but limitation is what breeds creativity and AI is currently very limited. That's why it's exciting. And I can't remind myself enough how much being stretched to produce something makes it more interesting. Not less, many artists who bemoan not having time or resources to make their art are suddenly hit with a real bump when they are given both. Too much freedom to focus on what they are aiming for in their head. They are liberated from having to face their mistakes, which can often springboard them somewhere greater. What will the mistakes of AI lead to? I don't know. But art, just like any field of science or engineering, often only makes these great leaps by accident. Imagine if Fleming couldn't, could indefinitely repeat his experiments. He'd one day go in, see that growth has stopped, the mold hasn't continued, and rather than confront what's happened, just control Z. I'm not gonna invent penicillin today, just new batch. Come on, Alex, stay on task. Or the invention of the microwave. That guy Spencer, chocolate bar melting, that story. Just below, control Z, start again. Still got my chocolate bar. New directions are found from having to salvage mistakes from the dirt. Because you don't have the time, resources, or ability to start anew. So AI is opening lots of interesting doors. It's in its early days, and it's making lots and lots of mistakes. These are the days of AI being a good artist. Once it gets too good at doing what it was designed for, it will no longer make mistakes. Technological advancement will force it to be too proficient great for commercial art purposes and whatever else will happen, but AI will die as an artist. Every new technology, when it first comes out, is always touted 
as the death of something. Because it is. Think of your job now. Did it even exist 30 years ago? If it did, say you're a teacher, a doctor or a lawyer, is the daily practice of your job the same? I'm sure the internet has revolutionised your industry in some way. Try explaining the internet to someone 30 years ago. The jobs like software engineers or digital marketers, or SEO experts, web people who are experts in code, a language as alien as Martian if you were to show it, or to someone that these jobs exist purely within it. These jobs pay into your bank on it, spend your earned money on entertainment within it, connect with friends via it, your first meet up with your future partner using it. But what is it? They would ask, and you'd pull out your phone, and you'd show them. Imagine them asking where it's coming from, you just look up at the stars and satellites. You'd be like a god. Where is it? Unimaginable access to all of human created content and knowledge at your fingertips. Now, imagine your time travel device glitches, and it goes the other way. Forward, 30 years time. Imagine. Now you are the backwards old timer and just how unbelievable you will find things, have be things that have become very common. It is guaranteed that there will be full-time careers in fields that you cannot even fathom now. Take me to your artists, you will say, and I truly believe they will take you to more people who are defined as artists than are working today. Will they be doing the same thing? Absolutely not. What they will be doing will have been replaced. But I also believe that the birth of AI art will lead to a revolution in the classical term of artist, not what it generally means today. There is no word more watered down than the words art and creativity. The word artist is totally disconnected from curiosity about real world function. And it's left purely on this sacred realm of concept, emotion and expression. And, as a fun and the function has been completely taken out of, art of the word artist. And it's as, as it's come closer and closer to the definition of nothing, in a death rattle, it insists instead it's about everything, that art can be anything. Hopefully, AI will choke the last air out of its lungs. <laughs> now, I love art. I live it and I breathe it. Art is now seen as something very different from technology and science, but it didn't used to be. It's now been lifted to this holy level as something greater, something profoundly human. I did an engineering degree, something wrongly considered to be done by very uncreative people. But if you don't think that creativity is making 400 tonnes of metal with 400 people in it fly across countries 100,000 times a day, and instead think great creativity is limited to those who can hand draw Marvel characters on command. First, nothing wrong with that, but we need to get on the same page. In my opinion, the coders working on AI are better artists than the people using it. And the greatest artists of old were not artists in any of the weak modern sense of the word. The great painters and sculptors were also technicians, architects, engineers, scientists. They were creative, curious explorers, and that's what it means to be artistic. To me, it means to be naturally curious about how everything works, how things could work differently, how they could work better. They create, they do not destroy. They would think about how flying 400 tons of metal through the sky might be a causing problems now, and not how to stop it, not how to cease and destroy, but to solve, to actively create something better. Even old, old doctors with no interest in art would have been artists, by our modern sense of the word, before scans and film. The only way they could reference something was to anatomically correctly draw it. So what happened? Well, the tools for the job got better. Once they could take a snap, the art, as we now call it, which they wouldn't have, was discarded. Like I said, my favourite thing to do is oil paintings. And that used to be the only way to get your portrait. The film camera destroyed it. That's also when painting got interesting again. But that's straying off topic. At the time, photography was considered by many as totally inhuman, evil. It even took your soul. Or it was argued that it had no soul. 
this was at the same time as motor cars were replacing horses to transport everywhere. And it was said that they had no soul. And this disconnect from what it means to be human and connect with other people and loving things around us is a real valid concern. But even those people who adopted photographic film three, four, five generations later moan about how digital now has no soul. Just remember that when you think AI has no soul. We should also remember that it was seen that the word, the, the invention of digital would destroy the field of animation because animation was defined as live, whole careers of people doing 2D drawings on cellophane converted into reels of film. They were animators. They do not exist anymore. Is animation dead? No, there's more animators now than there ever have been before and more jobs many of whom are now 3D animators bemoaning AI because it's the computer doing their work. Too young to remember the live lighting sets of real world models being dismantled as digital rendering of light effects improved. Deaf to the cries of, but you're not doing it anymore, a computer is. The definition of animator evolved and it's about to evolve again. As for the broad field of artist, well, it's a shit word anyway. Now in its last stand holds, this final bastion that AI is about to smash the gate down of. And that's all right. The word is vapid. Look at the art world <laughs> in its purest form. Art boiled down to such little real world function that in trying to say it can be anything, it's actually nothing. If you see something intelligent in most modern or conceptual works over the last 20 years, then you, as an intelligent sense making creature, you are the artist, not the maker of that art. And I have to say, I am what I call an artist, but I don't want anything to do with that definition. AI is going to save me. And however that looks, it won't stop me enjoying art as I understand it. <laughs> now, I can't keep rambling on without some form of definition about the visual art that AI will not replace. So take old sea creature drawings from when sailors came ashore, having seen these terrifying things that we now know are just curious whales, largely harmless. They would conjure these images up of their memory and imagination. And today they seem funny, ignorant, innocent, over the top. If you were good at drawing from observation, you could draw a better whale breaching close to a ship, right? But very few of us have actually seen a whale. We've seen representations of them through technology, we've never seen one. But we know what they look like, so if you're an artist, right, finding the appropriate images online and just use them as reference, take a leaping whale, an old ship, water splashes, you amalgamate them, yeah, you're an artist, why not? You drew a whale crashing next to a ship, but you don't know how it feels to see a leaping whale, so that emotion will never come through in your art. What certainly won't come through is the utter fear of seeing a whale having never seen anything like that before, knowing that you're on a very sinkable vessel in the middle of the ocean. That's real. That's what I love about art. These drawings are not correct, but they translate a feeling, a human feeling that you can empathize with. The whale you drew, the one from images you looked up on Google, of static photographs, well, now the AI is just doing the final part of that drawing, pulling those things together for you. And it's not doing it perfectly. So it's creating its own sea creatures and they are marvelous. Now, I know I sound like Frankenstein, not seeing the dangers of his own monster. But if you were to play with these tools, these early AI systems, you'd realize how human they really are being made of banks of human data. And if you are, or if you consider yourself an artist and you're curious, go and have a play, create some images. Or you could say, not for me. I like to draw hyper-realistic whales. Well, in my book, great. I also love observational drawing. And the fact that cameras exist doesn't stop me. And that's why true art for what it means to me or you will always survive, whatever AI does. Computers beat the best chess player in the world in 1997. You would have thought that that meant the game would become extinct. What, what's the point in playing it? But now it's more popular than ever. 
and people don't play computers, they play other people online. The same with computer games and the same with making art. The technology just allows us to connect in new ways. And yes, we are stumbling across something that opens up the most wonderful discussion about what it means to be human. Artists by temperament are meant to love that stuff. If you own any art, having a computer generated thing hanging on your wall versus someone else's human hand and story, well, you're more like a robot to me anyway. Now, we get everything we want to know from a device in our pockets. You want to know something about anything? Ask Google. I had to look up that Salvador Dali quote about mistakes just before this. You can say that's not the same as AI, that Google is just a repository of human information that is digitally collected and synthesized through keywords and algorithms to give you what you ask for to the best of its ability. Is AI art not the same? Then there's the elephant in the room of morality. Is it stealing? Is it breaching copyright? Perhaps, maybe, probably. It doesn't even matter, it's coming. Early technology loses every moral argument. The industrial revolution taught us that. The tractor ultimately meant more food for everybody, but in the short term, a huge labor force out of work. Morality shifts as easily as the soil, as much as people don't want to admit it. And while the purest form of artistic endeavor have been really hard to mechanize, this idea that it has some magic in it that will be lost is absurd to me. And when it comes to AI, there's a quote from a farmer during the Industrial Revolution talking about tractors, and he says, it makes farming so easy that the wonder goes out of the work. So efficient that the wonder of the land is lost, the connection to it, and with it, the wonder of a deep understanding and natural human relation to the soil and how connected we are to it. And it's true, we are increasingly disconnected but the frame keeps on shifting and art will always bring us back. The same critique was made of the moving picture cinema 100 years ago. They said there's no humans in it, unlike the theater. There's no human relation. You can't connect to a person via a reproduction of a person. That's why cinema will never replace live action theater, but it did, mostly. And I just, I keep taking this further in my head and thinking of, Millions, no sorry, thousands of years ago, of stories being told in caves, passed down through generations, remembered and retold. Then someone invents writing and teaches people to read. Oh, it's not the same. It hasn't got that human connection. You can't get the humanity without the telling by a human. And then years later, the press is invented. Or oh, it hasn't got that same human hand, the connection to an actual person who wrote it. And then comes the Kindle and so on. Ultimately, None of it matters. It's a tool and a new vessel to make art. Soon you will have AI stories read to you in an AI voice. And is that not the same as the first caveman recounting the stories of his elders? Just this time, it's infinitely wiser as it has recounted the whole of, all of humanity's stories and filtered them uniquely for you and your life. The question then comes down to a gender. It's not the AI, it's the motivation of those programming it. That is the scary bit. Will it be a problem? Yeah. Will more AI evolve? Yeah. But people and artists are problem solvers, just got a message. People are problem solvers. That's what they do. And artists used to be at the brink of this. And like everything, every world problem from climate change to every perceived injustice, it's so incredibly easy to shit on things that, and tear things down, to criticize the way things are done. It's so easy to virtue signal and protest. It's very hard to build, to create. So if you have a problem with AI art or the fear, the arc of AI, you can hide away and you can bemoan it if you want to. But I say, get in there and get involved. And if you really are worried about it, get onto these early platforms and look into the prompts and probe around and get into the vortex. Grab it and help it curve the arc to what you think is best. I've got to check this message and go now, but that's your only option. You don't have to be a programmer. You just have to be an artist.